Okay, so today I want to talk about expressions. How do we model expressions in our program? How do we process them? Um, here's a very simple example of an expression. I want to be able to say 2 plus 3 times 4. And I somehow have to store this in some kind of data structure. Um, I decided to have an interface called expression. And um, I have two functions inside this interface. One function for evaluating. So I want to get one number, like when I add and multiply and stuff, what's the result? And I want one function to pretty print this expression or um, print it in a, in a Lisp-like form. You will, you will see in a moment how that looks. Okay, and um, where there are interfaces, you must have implementing classes. So I have two classes. Uh, I have a class constant which simply wraps a double, you can see here. Um, where do we have examples where we use it? For example, here I wrap the double two, here I wrap the double three, and here I wrap the double four. Okay, I can simply write uh, the required values in the class header, no need to write constructors and getters and such. And uh, I can also combine expressions with an operator. So for example, in this case, I combine the, this left expression via this operator with this right expression. Right? This is the correspondence here. And um, the next example is, is this one. This is the left expression. This is the operator. And this whole thing is um, the right expression. Okay, so what happens when I run this program? What is the tree? What is the result? So here you can see the tree. Um, now you have the operators in prefix form. So first the operator, then uh, the operands, and, and also here first the operator, then the operands. This is simply how Lisp prints um, these kinds of expressions. Okay, and the result is 14. Let's check. Um, 3 times 4 is 12. 2 plus 12 is indeed 14. Okay, so how are these two classes implemented? Um, how do we evaluate a constant? This should be rather simple. We already know the value. And how do we print it as a as a Lisp tree? So you can see uh, the evaluate function is very simple. We just return the value, and um, the tree is also very simple. So so the tree for a number is just the number converted to a string. So that's exactly what we do. So this <laughs> this was rather trivial. Um, what about the next class? So evaluation is a little more complicated. We don't know the value yet. We have we have to ask the left expression, what is your value? We have to ask the right expression, what is your value? That's what we do here. And then we simply switch over the operator. When it's a it's an asterisk, we multiply. And when it's a plus symbol, we, we add. And when the user um, gives us a different operator, we, <laughs> we throw our hands up in the air and don't know what to do. Okay, and uh, the list tree is um, similar. We need recursive calls to the to the left subtree and to the right subtree. Then we prefix it with the operator and we wrap the whole thing in parents. Right. So these parents are simply what you see in the in the console. They have no special meaning inside inside strings. And in case you're not familiar, the dollar sign means please um, convert this. Uh, operator to a string or, or concatenated into the string or interpolated into the string. And um, if you need a more complex expression, you have to wrap it in curly braces. So this is called string interpolation in case you're not familiar with it. Okay, um, maybe let's get a little more space. So um, this works. Uh, this is very nice. Um, in real compilers, you have an interesting design challenge. So in real compilers, you don't have just two classes like constant and binary. You normally have 30, 40, 50 classes. And you also don't have just two functions, evaluate and list tree. You have stuff for static analysis, for bytecode generation, optimizations, data flow analysis. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I forgot some. And there's always a trade-off. Do, 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 we, do we want to make it easy to create new classes? Do we want to make it easy to introduce new, new operations? Not uh, not a simple decision, but in the last 20 years, compiler writers seem to um, seem to dislike this approach of putting the operations di directly in the interface. So, um, what else could we do? Let's let's first get rid of these operations inside inside the interface. Let's delete all this stuff. Okay. 
So if we don't want to put them inside the interface, let's maybe try simple freestanding functions. Um, and for now, I'm going to ignore the evaluate case. Let's concentrate on one function at a time. So let's write a list pre function that uh, takes an expression and uh, pr produces a string. And in, in the general case of an, of an expression, we don't really know what to return. So <laughs> let's return question mark. Then let's overload the method for um, constants and for binaries. Okay. For constant, we can simply convert the value to a string as we did before. And here we can use string interpolation again. So the parents for the nice Lisp syntax, then the operator, and then we need the um, recursive chords. So that would be list, uh, did I say list tree? Or I, I meant Lisp tree. That's my bad. Let, let me refactor this. Um, Lisp. Lisp tree. Okay. Uh, let's call it on the left. And then let's call it on the right. Okay, that looks better. Okay, uh, how, how do we call it? Uh, we pass example in. Okay. And now we have uh, an interesting hint from the IDE. The IDE claims that we never try to convert a constant into a Lisp tree, even though we clearly um, have constants in, in our example. So let's, let's see why this might be the case. Okay, so um, the first level seemed to, seemed to work correctly. So obviously we landed in this, in this method. We printed the parents uh, and so forth. The operator was, was a plus, but then we, we somehow failed to, um, to call the correct function. So what happened here, Lisp tree, as you can see, this call will always um, call this method, right? <laughs> it doesn't really matter what the dynamic type at runtime is. Um, the compiler already resolves uh, which method to call um, at compile time. So maybe you are confused by this. So this is um, overloading versus overriding. This is very um, unfortunate that these terms have so similar names. So um, when you call a method on, a, on an object, right? Maybe you say, I don't know, self to string or something. This call is dispatched dy dynamically. So at runtime, you can land in different to string methods, uh, depending on the class of um, of, of self at runtime. But when, when you simply have uh, three methods with the same name, which happen to have different um, static parameter types, that has no meaning at runtime, right? The runtime will not uh, try to differentiate uh, between these three methods based on the dynamic type of, uh, of a parameter. So um, this would be um, overloading a static dispatch. The compiler does the dispatch and overriding is dynamic dispatch, the runtime makes the dispatch, but virtual tables and, and stuff like that, right? If you're, if you're a C++ language guy. Okay, so this is a problem in most, I don't know, Java, C Sharp, Kotlin languages that um, you, get, um, you get this behavior. Uh, there are other languages that have so-called multiple dispatch, uh, or multi methods that also dispatch based on the types on the dynamic types of the parameters, but um, Java Kotlin and friends don't do this. Okay, <clears throat> but we we want to dispatch based on the dynamic type um, of these parameters, so we need some um, some level of indirection. Um, and how how do we achieve this? Um, we need an additional interface, let's call it expression handler, which can handle constants and one function. Let's maybe write it like this. Okay. And um, which can also handle, or oh, why did I write the, the capital S, which can also handle binaries. Okay. Um, and the decision which of these two overloads, this is normal overloading, which of these two overloads to call 
must happen dynamically inside of an expression. So we need a helper function inside of expression. Um, let's call it dispatch to a handler of type expression handler. Okay, cool. Um, right, and in our case, um, we need to return a string from these handle functions because we want to be able to um, produce a tree, right? So we have to return strings here and here, and we have to return a string here. Okay, so the dispatch has to happen differently in these two cases, right? So in, in, in the constant case, I want to dispatch to this method, and in the binary case, I want to dispatch to this method. So let's implement the dispatch to method in, in the two case in the two cases. Uh, okay, right. So how do we do this? So we get the handler passed in, and we can say handle, and then we need to pass either a constant or a binary where we are in the constant class, we simply pass the current object. Okay, so uh, this might look like uh, this should have the same problem. But um, in this case, the static type of this is constant, right? Before the static type of self uh, right here was simply expression. But the static type of this is always the K, um, the type of the class that we're in, right? So we can already see the IDE recognizes by this highlighting, or if I jump into the definition, that indeed this will call this overload of handle because the static type of this is constant and here we have a constant parameter. Okay, and I forgot to return the string, my bad. Okay, and uh, we can do the exact same thing over here. And now that the static type of this is binary, this um, this method call will dispatch to this handle method. Okay, so this is um, everything that you see here is purely a workaround, if you will, to enable dispatching on uh, something that is normally a parameter. We simply turn the parameter into um, the receiver of a method. Okay. Um, okay, how do we how do we continue now? So we have this expression handler, um, and of course now we need a class that implements it. So maybe let's call it um, tr uh, Lisp tree generator uh, implements expression handler. Okay, and now we need to provide these two handle methods. How should we uh, generate a constant um, <laughs> Lisp tree? And how should we generate a binary um, Lisp tree? So let's. Oh, I didn't. I didn't uh, select all the methods. What? My IDE seems to be a bit confused. Okay, let's start over. Class da -da, implement members right. Okay, so the handle for the constant is is exactly this code. Let me simply copy paste it. Okay. And the handle for the binary case is this one. Let me simply copy paste it. Okay, and then I can get rid of all this stuff. And then of course I need to um, I need to adapt the recursive call. So now I need dynamic dispatch on the self left. So I need to uh, call a method on it. So of course, which method do we want to call? There is only one message to, uh, method to call the dispatch to method, right? So dispatch to. And what is an appropriate handler that generates a list trees that is ourselves in this case? Okay, the same thing happens over here. So right, dispatch to this. Okay. Then of course, this won't work. So we have to dispatch on the example. And we don't have a list tree generator yet, so let's let's generate one. We don't need the new keyword in case you didn't know in Kotlin. <laughs> um, okay, let's see if this works. Or if you made some stupid error. See, this already works. Um, well, this is a lot of a lot of code to digest and uh, maybe a little confusing difference between overloading overriding, but this approach is very popular in. Uh, parser generators like, for example, Antler. So Antler will generate um, all this code for you. You don't have to write it yourself. Um, and all you have to write yourself 
is this um, expression handler. Right? Where I simply say, okay, I have one class that is responsible for generating a list tree. And if I la later decide, hey, I don't really need a list tree generator, you can simply remove one class. That's it. You don't have to touch 30 classes. That's, um, that's very good. Um, okay. Um, how can we make the evaluation part work? I almost forgot to, to, to do this. So of course we also have to dispatch. And now we need a different dispatch tool. Now I want something like an, I don't know, eval, evaluator um, handler or something, or maybe just evaluator. Maybe that's good, good enough a name. So let's write an evaluator. Uh, that implements the expression handler. Okay. And now you will see, oh, I don't really need to write them myself. Now you will see an interesting problem. Um, I don't want to return a string, right? The evaluator must return a double because I want to get the result 14.0. So I, I, of course I could convert from double to string all the time and vice versa, but that's not really the point of the exercise. So let's think about this for a moment. So the expression handler is defined to always return strings. Maybe that's not such a good idea. Why don't we make this generic? I can simply introduce um, a result type. Um, normally you have type parameters like T, but if, if it's only used for results, uh, um, a common convention is to use R for result. Okay, doesn't really make a difference. Okay. Um, and then, of course, in the dispatcher, we also have to uh, do this correctly. So here, oh, how do we do this? This is interesting. This should be a generic method that uh, returns an R and uses an expression handler of R's. That looks correct to me. And then this would be an expression handler. Uh, Okay, we need to make this generic. You see, this is not trivial. Uh, expression handler of R. Okay, returns an R. Okay, compiler is, is good to go. Then I simply copy this over here. Okay, what 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 is this warning? Type rank and ah, out variance. Right, this is uh, <laughs> co and contra variance. If, if this is um, a topic that you're interested in. Um, we can make this even more generic by writing out R. This is not really uh, the point of this video, but just because I want to get rid of this warning. Okay, so list tree generator is an expression handler of strings. Okay, and the evaluator is an expression handler of doubles. Okay, and now we can continue. See, this is not, not trivial, but interesting and hopefully fun. So how do we evaluate a constant? That that was rather rather simple. We simply said uh, return the value, and um, for the binary case, what did we do? We said, well, the left side um, has to dispatch to ourselves, okay, and the right side has to. Has to dispatch to ourselves. So then we get the uh, the temporary results of the children, and then we must switch over the operator. Um, right when it's uh, asterisk, we multiply, and when it's plus sign, we add. Mm -hmm. Same code as before. Uh, we need to return this result. Don't forget that. Uh, right, what if there's a different operator? Let's throw our hands up in the air and give up. Is that all? Oh, I forgot to qualify it with self. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks good. So let's see if this works, if, if it prints um, 14 again. Okay, right, this works. So um, the, if, if you see this, kind of thing for the first time, this is probably very confusing to you. So again, what is the point of this dispatch function? The point is um, the static type of left, if you, if you simply look at the definition, the static type is expression, um, but we want to call a handle method that either handles constant or binary. So we need some sort of dynamic dispatch. So we go through this 
level of indirection, right? And the dispatch function is implemented differently in the constant and in the binary case. And it doesn't look like it's uh, implemented differently because it's the exact same code if you look at it like uh, characters or strings. But the important difference is that the static type of this differs based on the class that you're in, right? This is of type constant, so we choose this overload. And here, this is of type binary, so we choose this overload, overload at compile time. And of course, these overloads are again overridden at runtime based on the handler that you're in, right? So for example, let's, um, let's pick the, the easy case, the constant case, um, this method this method overload number one of two <laughs> is overridden once um, in the list tree generator here and once in the evaluator here. Okay, so this is even a combination of overloading and overriding. Very interesting if you're a language lawyer guy. Okay, and um, I'm very glad that, that this generic stuff didn't, uh, didn't uh, slow us down um, to a halt, but it's... Um, yeah, you have to be a fan of static typing in order to appreciate this. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, um, it's a lot of complexity. <laughs> okay, um, but, but well, in, in, in most frameworks, you, you don't have to write the stuff yourself. Antler generates all this stuff, and all you have to do is write, um, write the, the, the concrete handlers. Okay, so this is. I, I hope this is not too confusing. Now it gets confusing. Okay, now fasten your seatbelts. Um, let me rename this interface, which handles um, different kinds of expressions. Let's not name it handler, let's name it visitor, right? A completely unrelated name to what we, what we actually do. Um, okay, the IDE sees that there are parameters which could also be renamed. Yeah, good idea, let's do it. Wow, okay. And let's not call those handle methods. Let's call those visit. Okay. And do it for the other case as well. Okay. And then let's not dispatch to a handler. Instead, let's accept a visitor. Okay. And now if you're confused, we're in the same board because the first time I learned the visitor pattern and probably uh, this applies to most beginners. These names, visitor, visit and accept don't make any sense at all. <laughs> so I find handler and dispatch to a lot, a lot easier to understand, especially if you understand this is more or less a crutch to get multiple dispatch in a single dispatch language. Um, but these are, the, these are the standard terms. So if you ever work with handler or other parser generators, they will uh, generate boilerplate code like this for you. Or if you look up, look up the visitor design pattern on Wikipedia or read the Gang of Four book or something. So um, there's a lot of opposition to this pattern because it introduces a lot of complexity, right? We have 57 lines of code now. All this stuff is basically, I don't know, just, just a workaround because we have a single dispatch language. Um, maybe we can do better in a modern language like Kotlin. Let's see. So let's start by again removing all this stuff. Um, here we go. Let's get rid of it. Uh, we don't need this. We don't need a visitor. Let's get rid of this as well. Okay, and maybe oh, no. Let let me get rid of all of this. Let's let's start let's start fresh. Okay. Um, so first, what what we want to get to run again is this um, list tree generation. Let me go back one more step and start with a simple function. So this tree, we started with a, a function that um, took an expression and produced a string, but uh, we uh, started with an approach that overloaded this function. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm simply going to stay inside one function. And what I'm going to do is um, simply look at the dynamic type of this. How do we do it in Kotlin? So in Java, you would say, just so you understand how this would look in Java, if self instance of expression, uh, I'm sorry, instance of constant, okay, then of course you would open a block. Uh, and then you would say, okay, we know the dynamic type of self is constant, so let's now satisfy the compiler uh, by, by a downcast, which is kind of redundant, but you have to do it. 
and then uh, you can work with the um, uh, constant reference instead of the self-reference and you have to do it for all the cases and it, it, get, it gets messy quickly and it, it really doesn't it, it looks ugly it doesn't look good um, okay how do we do it in Kotlin? We simply say when self is constant. That's it. Um, we don't need to cast. We don't need a new variable or something. We can now simply say hey, self punk value um, to string. Let's not forget to return it. Okay. Uh, and when it's a binary, what do we do then? Um, and then I need to get the list tree for the left expression. So oh, wait, I can do it in a, with string interpolation. That's not very complicated. Uh, so that was the uh, operator, right? Now it gets interesting. How do we do the recursive call? Oh, that's very, very simple. List tree of self punt left. That wasn't too hard. And then again, uh, list. <laughs> Why do I always write list tree? I don't get it. Lisp tree and here as well lisp tree lisp trees i'm sorry <laughs> for the interruption okay and then the catch all case um the operator what did i do wrong oh no it's not we don't know what it is <laughs> okay so how do we get this to work um this will simply be lisp tree of example. Let's see if this works. <clears throat> okay, looking good. And now let's do um, the same thing for the evaluation part. Let me start fresh just to, just to get some practice. Evaluate the expression, which should return a double uh, when self is a constant. I can simply return the value and when it's a binary we have to do something else we have to say uh, evaluate the left part so self from left right uh, evaluate the right part and then we have to switch again based on the operator right so um, the multiply case and the add case. This is very similar to the code that we had in the beginning. And if it's a different operator now, we can throw, hey, what is this operator? I don't, I don't know about. Okay. Um, ah, right. We don't cover all the cases potentially, right? When expression must be exhaustive, uh, right, of course. So what, what if it's neither of those cases? Um, so let's say error. Uh, so. Okay, so this looks rather similar as the code before, but now we have it, um, in this evaluate function for for both cases and not in in different classes. Okay, so how do we get this to work? We simply call a function and pass the example. Okay, and. Um, we can start arguing about uh, type safety and what have you. But if you if you simply um, try to discuss the complexities of the solutions, I think this one wins by a landslide. So you don't have these weird generic signatures. You don't have this weird indirection to simulate the dynamic dispatch on parameters, passing this all around. And sometimes this is the handler. Sometimes this is um, the the expression, um, yeah. So as a, I think this is a lot, a lot better simply because it's simpler to understand, <laughs> which is in my experience always um, the most important point about software. It has to be simple to understand so that you can maintain it, bug fix it, and um, and so on. Okay, um, but of course you always get the, the common complaints. What if you don't cover all the cases? You switch over the type, this is an anti-pattern. If at a later point in time you introduce a third type, you won't know it until runtime and stuff. Um, this is not a problem in practice because you have unit tests, right? <laughs> um, but just in case you don't believe in unit testing and uh, you want to rely on the static type checker exclusively, there is a solution. Um, so let me get rid of these else's. Um, 
right? So the compiler complains, hey, there could be other cases, maybe you didn't catch them all. Um, but we can simply replace the interface with a sealed class. And um, unfortunately, there are no sealed interfaces. The difference between, between um, a sealed class and a normal class is that all implementations or all subtypes of this class have to be in the same translation unit. So, so the compiler knows that constant and binary are the only possible cases for expression. So the compiler no longer complains, right? This is no longer read. And if you at some later point in time introduce another case, let's say you want a unary operator, you have an operator which is a string, you have an operand which is an expression, then the compiler will complain that, uh, oh, we didn't, we didn't uh, inherit from expression. Then the compiler will complain that these vents are no longer exhaustive, right? And you can't even run the program. So for, for you hardcore 100% static type safety aficionados, this should be um, satisfactory. Okay, um, right. So just because the visitor pattern is a design pattern and it's, uh, you can read about it in a book that is, that is a bestseller, doesn't mean it's the best solution in all cases, right? I think in Java, the visitor pattern is a, is a good idea. It works well with the language. Uh, you have great uh, tooling support for it. Antler generates all the boil boilerplate, generally works well. But um, modern languages have other solutions and Personally, I prefer this. Um, most compiler writers seem to prefer approaches like these. And um, uh, I hope I've convinced you um, that the visitor pattern is not always needed. Okay, until next time.